Hey everybody, DM Jim here, and welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. I have been getting a lot of requests for science fiction terrain, uh, whether it's for Star Wars Legion or Warhammer or Rogue Stars. There's uh, apparently there's a lot of science fiction gamers who I guess I've hit on uh, a soft spot recently with some of my speed builds related to science fiction terrain. Now. I still play fantasy games like Dungeons and Dragons, and I did get my start in creating terrain for D&D. And I have no intention of stopping uh, making terrain for those types of games, fantasy games. But the people who are emailing, emailing me are correct. I have looked online, and there's, you know, there are some science fiction terrain pages, like Facebook pages, and there are some YouTube channels that have some older videos. But unless I'm missing something, I'm not seeing a lot of current stuff. That's not to say that there aren't some terrain makers out there that I just don't know about. But I have to agree, I'm not finding a lot of science fiction terrain tutorials, at least current ones. I'm finding some older stuff. So I think that explains why in the past three weeks, four weeks, uh, when I check my email for Game Terrain Engineering, I'm finding a lot of people asking for more, more, more. Uh, some of them are uh, sending me photos or screenshots, I guess, of um, uh, of terrain that they're finding on the internet. Uh, some of them send me links to either Kickstarters or uh, some websites that sell stuff, and they're asking me, you know, hey, can you show me how to make this? And the other thing that people are requesting, which I understand, is stay away from the 3D printer. I get that. Uh, when I started this, ter uh, this this channel, Game Terrain Engineering, I fully intended to be using my 3D printer as a tool, and I still will. Uh, I think the 3D printer is just a great tool for creating things that can't be found or would be very difficult and time-consuming to make by hand from, from other crafting materials. But I get it. I, I'm, I'm hearing your frustration that, that you know, a lot of you don't have 3D printers, a lot of you want to be making science fiction terrain, and you just want some tutorials showing you where to get started or just some inspiration. So, I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, I do have some upcoming videos for Gaslands, because I'm still a Gaslands player, and I know I have a lot of Gas Gaslands viewers. For, for the time being, <laughs> I've got to get, I, I've got a lot of requests for science fiction terrain, and I want to start tackling some of them. So, you're going to be seeing a lot more of that uh, in the weeks to come, maybe even the months to come, until I can get control of some of the requests. Some of them are so good, I, it's hard for me to say no. I, I want to make them just to see if I can do it. So this episode, I am going to try and duplicate a photo uh, one of my viewers sent me. I'm going to put that photo up right here. It's a screenshot. And it to me, it looks like a power generator. Okay, for you can call it whatever you like. I tackled that one. I tried to duplicate it using non, no 3D printer and just materials that I had laying around. So what did I make for you? Well, you call it what you like, but um, this one is a grungy one. I, uh, I, I, I intentionally made it look beat up, worn, dirty, used. Hope you like it. I'll include some close-up photos at the end of the video, but let's go ahead and get to the, uh, to the tabletop and let me describe to you how I made this and some of the key features, and maybe you can duplicate this. I started the project by just wrapping a four and a half inch piece of PVC pipe, one and a half inches in diameter, with some granny graining. And I used some large zip ties spaced somewhat evenly uh, around the, uh, the piece of pipe, and then I hot glued everything so it didn't move around. After that, I uh, used some hot glue again to just secure some little wooden circles onto the ends. Uh, and then I used some smaller pieces of wood circles to, uh, to cap them. I cut the base uh, for this project out of chipboard. If you look carefully, I'm cutting and scoring so that I can fold it down and make it into this rectangular base. I also cut the center out after measuring the, uh, the contraption so that it would sit down in the, uh, in the gap. 
I use these tiny little wooden cubes with hot glue to just hold the edges together and to make them 90 degrees and give them, you know, make them more solid. I used my Proxon foam cutter just to cut some small steps that went all the way around the base and later on I coated these in some Mod Podge before I spray painted the whole thing black. The other thing I did was cut some of the diamond plating plastic that I have that would run along the, the sides of the generator. You can see here I'm just gluing them in place and those will be painted silver later on. And then it was basically just adding bits and bobs. I added a lot of these little uh, wooden squares and circles and rectangles. I used a little red plastic container uh, flipped upside down to uh, just put it on there sort of like a, a control tower or something and then added more wooden pieces to it. I cut some more chipboard for little, you know, little pieces of rectangle and things like that and glued everything in place and then I went and black bombed it with uh, black paint. I went over the black paint really, really thin with watered down gray paint. I wanted that to, I did that to give it a worn look, a uh, beat up look. I painted the diamond plating with bright silver and I'll, I'll darken it later with a wash. And then I just used some random colors. I used a metallic purple to cover the grill work and hit various places with some blues and greens and just random colors, whatever I thought would look good. After the painting was done, I took some dark tone uh, wash and just uh, hit all the surfaces with it, especially the silver painted uh, diamond plating. When the wash dried, everything looked you know, grungy and used and dirty and uh, just gave it a more realistic look. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Uh, it was not difficult to make. Total time, not counting paint drying, was under two hours. Uh, it just didn't take long to make this. I hope you like it. It, I'll include some photos at the end of the video, but it really looks good. It's worn, dirty. It's the details, the the diamond plating here that's been dirtied up, the the granny grating that's been uh, painted the purple, the the shiny purple, metallic purple. Uh, this is something that I would easily put on my table for a science fiction game. It's uh, it's just got that got that look to it. So anyway, I hope uh, as I continue to put these up that I'm giving you guys some inspiration, showing you that it's not difficult to, to make uh, terrain, especially science fiction terrain. Keep the requests coming. Again, I am overwhelmed. So if you're sending something in now, uh, no promises ever. I mean, I've got plenty to keep me busy. But, uh, but these are fun. So if you've sent me something in the last few weeks, uh, and it was something really cool and interesting, chances are I've got it in a folder somewhere uh, on my to-do list. This one came from a viewer, and uh, you know who you are. I hope you like it. hope you can duplicate it. I'd love to see it. Any, anyone that tackles this, uh, I'd love to see a photo. This is DM Jim, and I will see you in the next episode.